For some, they may be silly. But what I love about memes is that they tap complex issues in a very lightly manner. The image is taken from the clip of Family Guy, an American animated series which ridicules American culture. But in the image, we can also see how Asians are stereotyped. That is, Asians are calculators. Asians are excellent mathematicians. Asians are born with aptitude for numbers. It's very difficult to find this culture in the Filipino setting because we are more American than Asian. But working with the Chinese Filipino community allowed me to see this culture of excellence with all of its pros and cons. Being a trainer for various competitions, I aim for excellence. My trainers and I toil, cram, pressure ourselves just to win competitions. We reach for the gold. We aim for the top spot. When we've conquered one level, we aim for the next. We always want to be number one. Now, there is nothing wrong with the statements I have said, except for the word, always. And let me tell you why. You have to be good at everything. Failure is unacceptable. You either be a doctor, a lawyer, a businessman, an engineer, or a disgrace to the family. Now, this may sound like it comes from a, a plot from a favorite television series, but I had students who were depressed, troubled, because they were told they're not good enough. They strive so hard, they sleep late at night, socialize less, but all their efforts are meaningless unless they get a good grade. Some of these students cry when they get an 80 in an exam. Some will look for loopholes in how you check their essays just to get one or two points. For them, every grade is important. For them, it means excellence. But excellence doesn't always equate to high grades. Excellence doesn't always mean high intelligence. Excellence comes in many forms. When I started training, there were only a few students. Most of them were math trainees. It was the same set of people being sent to competitions. They were all honor students. But I noticed Edward. At first, I thought he wasn't listening in my lecture. But when I asked him questions, he answered them flawlessly. His exam scores were also remarkable. But Edward is ordinary. He struggled with Chinese classes, like the majority. <laughs> but still, I took a risk. I trained him. I partnered him with a math trainee. I took a non-honor student to join competitions. And the results were depressing. <laughs> Biology and chemistry competitions were won, but not physics. But we pushed through with our trainings. The next set of competitions came, and we started winning. With a very short period of time, with all his dedication and hard work, Edward morphed from being ordinary to extraordinary. He showed grit. He was focused. The science competitions ignited his natural potentials. These details are not reflected in his report card. That year, Edward still took summer classes, but he entered the University of the Philippines. 
He is now a fifth year student taking VS physics. And he can actually do better physics now than I can. On my second year of teaching, we established the Matrix Club, a club that's supposed to hone the spatial abilities of students. One of the original members is Andrea. Now, Andrea is again an average Judenite. But when I've given her engineering tasks, she worked on them diligently. And so I sent her to competitions. And within that school year, she was not required to take the periodic exam. She was exempted for almost every quarter after winning all the major competitions given to her. Andrea's willingness to learn and being keen on details allowed us to win competitions we've never won before. Andrea is now in UP Diliman taking BS Architecture. Now Jake, now Jake is not a trainee. Jake is the typical guy trying to survive high school. Most of the time, is here during summer, taking classes. But he was persistent. He asked questions. He seek for consultations. You will feel the desire to learn. If you're going to look at this report card, one can say, you can say, that he is academically challenged. But never in that report card will you see a description on how persistent he is. I was able to handle Jake for two years. And on his last year in high school, he did not have to take any summer class. He was able to enter one of the top four universities in the country, UST. And he is now geared towards medicine. Now, the last two students that I'll cite have just entered senior high school, but their transformations are also remarkable. Now, Andre is a small, quiet kid when I first met him, and it stayed that way for a year. But then he joined Matrix, and he flawlessly accomplished a set of activities that no core group member has done. I got interested. Then I realized something better. He can also perform theory well. So I sent him to various quiz bees. And the initial results were again failures. Still we trained. And just like Edward's case, the science competitions ignited Andre's enthusiasm. And for the last two years, he was just ripping awards. He was able to land a spot as well in the top 10 of his batch. Now, Gian is a typical cool guy who's not really into academics. He prefers doing basketball. But then he made water rocket launching as easy as cutting pie. And that's actually one of the competitions we've never won. So I sent him to various engineering competitions. And just like Andrea, GN skills allowed us to win competitions we've never won before. But what impressed me the most is that GN was able to connect theory with practice. I was amazed how he recites what we've discussed in physics class as he is preparing an output. GN's academics also improved. Now, what I love about these stories is how students transform from being average to being exemplary. They were ordinary students who were given the right motivation and the right environment, and they were able to do extraordinary things. What I love about these stories 
is that it is a reminder that we measure, our measurement of intelligence is relative. Intelligence which we usually associate with excellence. It reminds us that education is a social construct. Learning comes in different ways. That's why we he often hear various pedagogies. Montessori, constructivism, multiple intelligences. We're all familiar with the story of Einstein, of Zuckerberg, of Bill Gates. They all struggled with the education system. They think differently. Their talents cannot be boxed. But this is the sad truth of our education system. We have standardized tests. We measure the ability of students based on what the average can do. But some students are beyond average. Everybody is a genius. But if you judge the fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will believe it's so life that it's stupid. That was stated by Einstein himself. There's a very narrow gap between success and failure. It's called the learning. And that is what we need for us to be excellent. Whenever I look for a new trainee, I do not look at their grades. I look at their attitude. Whenever I go to the class, I always say to them, your aptitude is not what I want. It's attitude. It's discipline and commitment. We usually associate 100 for perfection. But the number system doesn't end with 100. The number system goes to infinity, symbolizing infinite possibilities. So to all students here, go beyond that label, go beyond that report card. You are more than just a number. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.